Well, aloha once again. So happy to be reconnecting today. My name is Paul Fletcher and this is The Healing Source. Uh, last week we embarked on a whole new series. And this new series is actually going to be unique and quite different than the previous nine series. One of the reasons why is because we're going to start embarking upon you know, the practical application of things in our life. Um, you know, navigating the challenges of this path of enlightenment, uh, it's, you know, you have the, you have the uh, things that we're taught, right? Meditate, do forgiveness, you know, it's important to do the, the daily necessary practices to keep our energy in balance, to help us make highest and best choices for our wellness. Um, but applying this to daily life can be a bit challenging and it is the path of enlightenment and so last week I breached this subject and I shared with you that I'm going to be sharing much more personal information uh, personal perspectives and observations about the nature of our existence in this particular space in this universe and here on earth of course and today I'm going to go into more of that the subject for today is what and who you are in relation to, to the source creator. <clears throat> now this can be very, very wide and it's very, very subjective, meaning uh, this is one perspective, okay? In my very humble perspective, there are eight billion of us and shockingly, there is not a single one of us, eight billion, that have the same perspective really on anything and if you whittle down people that do appear to have the same perspective and you drive down on it you will find that there is some nuances and unique differences about the way it's viewed the way it's considered uh, the lens that caught that taught them to view it that way their perspective um, how it will affect their future uh, so there are literally 8 billion quite unique perspectives and views. Mine is just one of them. But my hope and intention in sharing with you this information today on what and who you are in relation to the Source Creator is to help you to have this life be much more fun, <laughs> much less challenging, and much more... Um, uh, uh, I want to widen your girth of understanding, uh, at least that's my hope, without um, challenging you or challenging your existing perspective. One of the things that I have learned in being on the, a dedicated path of growth in a spiritual journey is that the moment I think I'm right, I'm definitely wrong. And by holding this understanding and not buying into I'm right and you're wrong, not uh, buying into you're wrong and I'm right. In other words, not being self-righteous, but being fluid in my comprehension of what I currently know and being fluid in the allowance of new comprehensions. I have found that that has served me well on, on widening my girth of comprehension of our purpose here, who we are in relationship to the source, etc. So I'll be sharing with you a very subjective perspective on that. And if you have no interest in what I have to say, great, throw it right out the door. I don't have any attachment. My only purpose here is to offer you um, a unique way of thinking and approaching this life so that your um, life itself can be much happier and healthier and better. That's my, my intention. So if I did have an attachment, that would be it. So uh, as I did last week, I have a set of bullet points of some things that I wanted to, to share with you because it's so... Um, <laughs> the subject matter, I can go on and on and on and on and on. I mean, I can take each one of these bullet points and spend an entire podcast on each one of these bullet points uh, because each one has a, a layers and layers of wisdom underneath it. I could say, you know, we are one universe of many universes and I can talk about that for hours and all the different things because when you start talking about universes, you're talking about life outside of Earth and that's the whole subject matter. So there's lots of different directions this can go. But my intention here, as stated, is to help you uh, to have a, a 
a more enjoyable experience <laughs> in this otherwise uh, uh, life that, that could, for a lot of us, be filled with a lot of suffering. And it doesn't need to be. Okay? So, let's start with the first subject. Original Creator. What is Original Creator? It seems to have many names. Most of us, most meaning that I'm aware of in my English-speaking tongue, refer to original source creator as God. Um, it's, a, it's just a name. It's just a, a word that represents something that's really hard to wrap our mind around, something that's really hard to wrap our consciousness around. Um, Allah, God, source, creator, the universe, uh, there are many, 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 many different names for the original source creator. Okay? And I have no idea uh, if it even matters which one we prefer to call it. Because honestly, the moment we say God is the right one, Allah is not the right one, source is the right one, uh, um, uh, universe is the right one, then instantly we're wrong. right? Because you cannot be uh, the ultimate self-righteousness. So probably all of them are perfectly fine. Next, what is the Tao versus, let's say, God? Well, it's just another word in essence. Now, I'm going to share with you some of the wisdom and teachings that have been brought forward into my experience that Master Shah has brought forth. And his terminology, his usage of the word Tao, uh, basically is the word that represents the biggest umbrella of all. And he, in his understanding, which doesn't come from his mind, it comes from meditating for 50, 60 years and, and, and you know, working with divine and source to help heal billions of people. Um, and in those very uh, deep meditations and very deep connections to source, his information that he shares is that the word Tao represents ultimate creator, his verbiage, ultimate creator, meaning that everything falls underneath this large umbrella. So he would share in his terminology that God is more of a representation of our galaxy slash universe <clears throat> because there might be uh, another universe somewhere else where there are many galaxies and many planets and many stars and many other life forms that might not even know what the word God means, might not have any recollection of that or any belief system that represents that. So Tao represents the ultimate creator of all creation, which includes all galaxies, all universes, all stars, all forms of creation, all matter, all antimatter, all that is um, light, all that is not light, all that is created and all that is emptiness that is not created yet. That would be the word Tao. That represents everything. There is no beginning, there is no end. It is not a circle necessarily, although that terminology is used to represent the Tao, the oneness. Um, the, the ultimate creator, uh, again, this is subjective, appears to be never-ending always growing, always expanding, never ending. Therefore, there is no beginning, there is no end. There is no shape. There is no sound. There is no way to box it in, to analyze it and de define it. This would then be the Tao, the ultimate creator. And the minute you can try to define it and put it in a box, label it, well, that's when you immediately go off base. So this is what... Uh, the baseline of understanding who we are in relationship to Source Creator. We have to first understand what is Source Creator, not necessarily who, because who instantly causes us to box ourselves in with our very minimal comprehension, and we might even give who an image of a human being, which, you know, Source Creator may have no shape, no sound, no beginning, no end. Source Creator could be a blob but we don't know, okay? So we have to open our consciousness to this. Now, in the uh, high-level wisdoms, and I have seen this in multiple places, 
utilizing different verbiage, different terminology, but basically saying the same thing. <clears throat> original creation, original creator, creator, um, was not expansive, was just is, just is. And there apparently came a certain point in time there's no time either. That's another subject we'll talk about shortly. Um, but there apparently was a, a point in the emptiness and the nothingness of ultimate creator where there was a separation. Now, uh, going back to some wisdom and teachings that came to humanity in the 1920s, in the 20s, um, and it basically started talking about how the universe breathes in and breathes out. Uh, Madhvantara and Prailana, I believe, was the, the Sanskrit verbiage, breathing in and breathing out. And this uh, and wisdom and information kind of coincides with the uh, creation philosophy that goes with the information associated with ultimate creator. Um, you hear about the Big Bang Theory, for example. This wisdom would say that there, there was a separation and the clean chi, chi means, you know, energy, uh, and the dirty chi separated. The clean chi rose and created heaven, the dirty chi fell and created earth. This is a very loose comprehension of, of some of the verbiage that is shared about creation, okay? So that's different than Big Bang when everything exploded and voila, here we are. Um, doesn't mean one's right more than the other, this is just a spiritual perception, one that makes sense to me that I'm sharing with you. Again, it's all subjective. You can choose to accept it or not. So uh, if there was a oneness blob that had no boundaries, no beginning, no end, the source creator of all things, and it said, let's separate the clean chi from the dirty chi, and the general statement is there's uh, clean chi created heaven, dirty chi created earth, and again, in the human consciousness, that puts everything in a circle in a box. There's up, there's down, there's yin, there's yang, there's separation. Okay, Let's put it in a nice circle, draw a line down the middle, and now we have heaven and earth. We have yin and yang. And that, again, is extremely limiting. Extremely, extremely limiting. But our mind wants to put it in a box so we can comprehend it. If we expand beyond that, clean she rises, dirty she falls, and expand it to all creation, all stars, all galaxies, all universes, which there are literally, according to science, as far as I can see with their scopes, there are countless galaxies, countless universes. One universe has countless galaxies. They cannot see the end. And that, uh, according to the wisdom of the Tao, would be heaven rises, uh, dirty chi falls, creates earth, but in fact, that's representative of all physical creation and all non-physical creation. That is a better representation than the very simplistic version, clean she rises creates heavens, dirty she falls creates earth. That's easy for a mind to comprehend for this little experience we are here on earth and this very small galaxy in this very massive universe, which is only one of countless universes. So imagine this little representation we have here where we have this God and, and we're all stuck in our own little worlds and we're feeding our dogs and doing our jobs and dealing with our health issues and trying to make money. And we're in this very, very, very small world, right in you know, our own personal inner world on this very large planet where we can barely comprehend our neighbor's problems, our neighbor's issues. And we're at the mercy of, of the economic conditions and blah, 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 blah. And we get so caught up in all the political and everything else, but ultimately we are experiencing a particular experience here on this thing called Earth that sits in a galaxy that is a part of a universe that is part, a very, very fractional part of something that is billions and billions of times bigger with billions of universes. So it's, it's not easy to grasp that at all. So who are we in relationship to this source creator? <laughs> I mean, right? 
well, where do you go with this? And how do you, how do you understand it and work with what we understand in such a way where it makes my life easier? Where I can apply everything that I've learned in such a way where my life is easier. And then maybe I can expand to comprehend that. This is where we're headed and what I'm trying to accomplish with sharing this information today. Okay? So, the universe, <clears throat> our universe, and all universes are part of the Tao. The Tao is never ending, always expanding. And potentially it contracts at some point in time. But what then causes that expansion? Here's where we start to connect to man. Here's where we start to connect to you and your connection to the source. Uh, we go back to the previous statement. Uh, clean chi rises, dirty chi falls, right? Dirty chi represents physical life in this example. Um, that's all physical life, not just you and me. That's all stars, all planets, all you, all anything physical that you can sense with your five senses. That represents the dirty chi. Everything else represents the clean chi, with that which you cannot see with your five senses. Those also loosely are, are representations of frequencies and vibrations, which is again a subject that we can spend many podcasts on. But just real briefly, we tend to judge our existence and the approval or not approval of other existences by our five senses. And that is the epitome of foolish. Because the minute we say, if I can't see it, touch it, feel it, smell it, taste it, then it must not be true. Well, that's just simply foolish. And that absolutely limits your growth. My eyes can only see a certain range. And light goes from the very top down to the very bottom. And if I put my finger here in the middle, I have another finger down here, but if I had a third finger and it was right here in the middle, that represents the entire range of what I can see. I cannot see from here up. I cannot see from here down. So if I can't see it, does, that doesn't exist. How foolish is that, right? All of that that we cannot see, feel, touch, taste, experience is happening on different vibrational frequencies that we cannot um, connect to. We cannot see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, etc. So therefore, it must not be there, right? Again, foolish. So open your consciousness and realize that as a human, having a human experience, we are having a very unique and specific set of experiences with a very unique and specific set of um, sense organs and systems. And we, you and I, we, all of us here on earth, are in a process of awakening Awakening what? Awakening our consciousness, awakening our, um, our knowingness, awakening our vibration to ascertain what might be lower frequency than us and what might be higher frequency than us. So those with third eye, for example, can see things that are higher frequency than the visible eye can see. All of a sudden it's like, wow, I can see a Buddha. Wow, I can see a ghost. Wow, I can see something that the physical eye cannot see. Did it... Uh, all of a sudden just manifest that wasn't there before. Unlikely, it's very likely that there are lots of planes of existence with lots of life occurring. Okay? So who are we in relationship to the source creator? Who is that Buddha, that ghost, that um, deity, that darkness in relationship to the source creator? Well, ultimately, based on my comprehension and understanding, we are all ultimately um, individual sparks, souls, of original source creator that were formed and created when clean chi rose and the dirty chi fell. We just happened to fall into this third dimensional experience. Others might have been in different dimensional experiences, having their unique dimensional experiences completely separate from ours, and they have no clue that we exist. It's like the ant world. If, if, if we didn't know that ants existed, we wouldn't know that they were in this earth. What else is in this earth that we don't know about? What else is in the ocean that we don't know about? We probably know 1% of just what's on our planet, let alone what's off our planet, okay? And yet we act so aware and so conscious. So when we uh, elevate our frequencies or shift the range at which we can experience things, all of a sudden our consciousness shifts and we become more. It is my observation, my opinion, my um, understanding that life, the purpose of life, is simply experience. We are here to experience. We are here to enjoy life. 
We are not here to suffer. <laughs> we are not here to whine, complain, to have financial difficulties, to have health difficulties. We are only here to experience. Just as an ant experiences life as an ant, grasshoppers experience life as a grasshopper, the wind experiences life as wind, the clouds experience life as clouds. These are all matter. They are not non-matter, which is that which is formless, that has not formed yet. So the universe is constantly expanding, and this expansion occurs when we think. When we think. The expansion of the universe occurs when we think. Thought precedes words. Thought precedes actions. So this then becomes a very important statement as to our relationship with the source creator because it has been stated and it is one of the things that I believe that we co-create. That as a spark, as a soul of creator, given, uh, placed into this existence, this entirety of all creation, all universes, as wide and as far as one can possibly comprehend, that we could um, finish this life experience and completely start in a different life experience in a frequency band, let's we'll call it frequency band number 2.7 or 5.4 and have an entirely different set of experiences. Experiences is the word. Here we're having experiences. If we uh, finish this life and start it in dimension 4.7 we could also have an entirely different experience. And in that experience, we would know not about this one here. Nothing. So we want to widen. Hi, Stanley. Thank you for your comments. Yeah. I hope that more and more people share this. You know, I only tend to speak to the Tao groups and they think they know what I'm going to share so they don't come. <laughs> but they miss a lot of good stuff. So hopefully this gets shared. Um, when we recognize that we are a lens through which the source experiences itself, we are much, much closer to the truth. We are the lens, one of countless lenses. Remember, source experiences clouds through one of the particles of the cloud. Source experiences underwater ocean life through one, uh, one tentacle of the amoeba. Source experiences through all of its souls. And we are one of its souls. And if we can place ourselves in the right consciousness, we can start to realize that we are simply experiencing life through our five senses. How we react, how we respond, well, that is what dictates our suffering. Right? So if we can stop long enough, the, um, the um, buying in to all the dogma and all the rhetoric and all the reactions and all the, all the, um, um, the emotions, the angers, the resentments and everything else that comes along with it. If we can stop long enough to stop taking stuff so personally and start putting ourselves in a position of, I am source experiencing all that source has to offer in this particular set of experiences, this particular dimensional experience, we can much more readily accept the next thing that I personally believe is true, which is that we are co-creators of that experience. You see, most of us in this earth dimensional life experience fail to recognize that we are creating what are we experiencing, whether it's the suffering, whether it's the excellent health, the excellent relationship, the shitty relationship. It doesn't matter what it is we're experiencing. We are actually co-creators in it. Fortunately, a good chunk of humanity, probably 20, 25%, are now finally aware enough to say, yeah, yeah, I buy that, I agree with that. The other 75% are in massive suffering. They are in um, I am the victim of everything outside of me and everything around me and I am just doing my best to keep my head above water and I, uh, 
I have no control over anything, and this is their limited mindset and limited consciousness because that's you know, that's where they're at in their experience. And Source does not judge that. Source does not give me great kudos for, for sharing something that might be of value to others that don't understand it yet. I don't get any any up, upliftment necessarily or, or placed on a higher pedestal because there is no higher or lower. There is just Source experiencing Source. There is no higher or lower. So those that, that don't understand any of this, they're not lower. They're just experiencing that lack of understanding or that space where they're at. And Source is experiencing that. So it's quite interesting when you place yourself in this perspective of I am the one of the lenses of the source experiencing itself. And let us add to that, I am a co-creator of this experience. Now, part of the uniqueness of being in this third dimensional earth-based experience is that I am here with 8 billion other co-creators and that's just my current comprehension. There could be a lot more co-creators in this earth-based experience that are affecting <clears throat> what enters my vibration, what I see, taste, feel, touch, uh, that could be affecting my ability to vibrate to a higher frequency or a lower frequency, thereby experiencing angels or demons or whatever else. There could be other things that I cannot comprehend through my lens that are affecting me, but I absolutely know that those 8 billion people that are co-creators are affecting me. The difference is I am the ultimate co-creator of my reality. So I, as the ultimate co-creator of my lens, of my reality, can decide what that external, those other 7.99999 billion people, how I want to perceive their actions. For example, a war starts you know, right next door to me, and then all the refugees come into my land and they start affecting da -da 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 around me, okay? So am I the victim of people taking my crops, my this, my that? Or can I change my, my perspective and reality around it and see that this is an opportunity to help somebody else's lens change for, for something that was a struggle for them to become an opportunity for a new life? Every, every choice we make is built upon our perspective. Our perspective is what we have accepted as true or not true. Uh, your mom and dad teach you something, did you accept it as true or not true? Your teachers teach you something, did you accept it as true or not true? This helps form what's loosely referred to as our ego or personality, which then dictates how we react and respond. And we're constantly adjusting that personality, that reaction and response. The person that's moving towards or wishes to have higher levels of enlightenment, or another way of stating that, the person that is working on elevating their frequency and vibration so that they have a different set of experiences and they see through a more, um, a lens that has a wider range of possibility, that person says, I choose to receive this information from these other 7.99999 million people in such a way that it is positive to me. You might say, I'm going to put a silver lining on every cloud that enters my vibration. I'm going to change it into a positive. This then would be a very, and again, in my personal opinion, my observation, a very wise choice because we are co-creators of our reality. So why wouldn't I want to take something that in the past I might perceive as unpleasant or negative and reframe it in such a way that I perceive a positive out of it. By doing so, because I'm a co-creator, I am assisting the expansion of my universe in a way that does not bring me suffering. So if you find yourself in a state of suffering, then be uh, awake and aware, see things through a little bit higher frequency lens, say, I don't need to react and respond this way, even though I've done that a thousand times in the last you know, 60 years. 
Instead, I can choose to reframe this as something that will somehow benefit me. I don't even need to know how it's going to benefit me. But I know that I'm a co-creator. I know Source has given me this ability. Source will give me whatever I place my attention and intention upon. So if I place my attention and intention upon this external experience, which before I judged as something unpleasant and negative, that somehow this will positively benefit me and bring great benefit to me, uh, if I choose that, then what do you think Source is going to do for me? Source is going to say, okay, I'm happy to support that, just like I'm happy to support something negative if that's where you place, wish to place your attention. So the universe is in constant expansion. Our personal universe is in constant expansion. And that expansion can be filled with suffering or it can be filled with something positive or somewhere in the middle. And you and I are in this dance, working with our five senses, reacting and responding with old patterns and old things that we were taught that truly are not serving us in many, many cases. So when we do the things that Master Shah suggests, like forgiveness, like uh, tracing of calligraphies, or receiving healing, or um, um, doing good service to and for others, closing our eyes and meditating, and thinking about positive things, when we do these common sense things, that oftentimes can be very hard, I'll be the first to tell you, they can be very difficult. Um, what in essence we are doing is we're being responsible for the development of our personal universe. Because when you hear all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes, you need to know you have your own universe. You are your own universe. You are responsible for the creation of your own universe. You are not the victim unless you allow yourself to be the victim of other people's um, expansion of their frequencies and vibrations. And if you have warmongers and they all get together, then that creates a cloud of warmongering which can affect you unless you say, I don't want it to affect me. I choose to have that affect me positively. You could start a business that's built around supporting people to get through and past where uh, the, the struggles of war in which you are uh, generate positive virtue and you help others and you get paid for it then all of a sudden that warmongering outside of you created positive benefit to you. Why? Because you reframed it in such a way where it can do that. So you can apply this to any part of your life. It doesn't really matter what it is. And this is just one of so many different things that I want to share uh, that can positively, positively affect you. Now, time and space. I touched on this, I don't know, back in uh, series number six or seven, I forget which. So very briefly, um, space is, is not, never ending, okay? Universe expands, it's a never ending expansion. Uh, it expands by our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Is that expansion benefiting us or not benefiting us? That's up to you, I just gave you that information. Time is a construct of this particular dimension. We have our senses, taste, touch, feel, smell, uh, and um, what are the, last one is I can't remember at the moment. So time exists for us. It is my belief, my comprehension, that time does not exist in other dimensions. It's hard for us to grasp, but nevertheless, you can accept it, not accept it, it's relevant. But in this dimension, it, it is an aspect of creation. So if we're co-creators and there is time, then the time between our creation, uh, our request, and our statement of positivity that doesn't matter what this negative out is here, it's going to turn into a positive for me. The gap between the thought and the, that actual manifestation is filled with time. So it's our responsibility to, uh, to basically ignore anything that does not reflect uh, our desired end result. Uh, we can acknowledge it, we don't want to push it away because that empowers it. We want to acknowledge it, but we want to acknowledge it is no longer part of where I place my intention. It's in front of me because I had placed my uh, negative intention upon that, you know, last month, last year. That's why it's in front of me now. But now I'm going to choose positive, and I chose positive last week, and I chose positive last month. And even though something's negative in front of me at the moment, because of the, the constructs of time, it's just delayed. It's like a lag. So choose instead to ignore it 
uh, acknowledge it but ignore it, and default back to your internal workings. Now I'm going to move towards a wrap up here. All possibilities exist at all time. You can choose to accept that or you can choose not to. But I can choose how I react and how I respond. Therefore, I can choose something that to the logical mind seems entirely impossible. But all possibilities exist at all times because we are a lens of creator and creator is all possibilities. And since we are part of creator, we are a soul built with all creator abilities then all possibilities exist, even that which seems entirely illogical or almost impossible. That possibility exists. How then do we bring that into our forefront? We let go of a belief or a consciousness that we cannot have it. That's just something that we chose to believe. It doesn't mean it's true because all possibilities exist. I can assure you that because all possibilities exist in some other person's universe, somewhere else, possibly another dimension, they're having that exact experience that you think can't, po can't be possible. I promise you, they are having that experience that you think can't be possible because all possibilities exist. So you need to let go of something if it's not serving you and choose something that might seem improbable, but it is possible. How do you get from here to there? This is where I will wrap this part of it up. And again, I go back to what I said in the beginning. You can completely throw this out, maybe in the dishwater, show it all out, maintain your current trajectory, your current understandings. Perfectly okay, I have no attachment. I'm only trying to offer information or wisdom that can assist you with your health, happiness, and wellness, and potentially your further alignment with source, if it serves you. So this next statement might be a little unusual. <coughs> My teacher, Master Shaw, shared this from one of the more advanced manifestation courses he offered. And in essence, what he said was, we are not actually here. We are uh, a soul residing within source right now. As we, You're here listening to me through your five senses, and it certainly feels real. It feels real to me. Hunger feels real. Dry mouth feels real. I need some water right now. Me talking to you feels real, you hearing me feels real, so it all feels real, but according to a um, higher level of comprehension and wisdom, you and I, as has been explained, are source, are part of source, therefore we are residing, our home, our soul's home is in source, right now. That's where we, you and I are. We might not have the label Paul, the label, you know, Simley or Doreen, this is the name as I can see on the side here. But we are there. We are not here. We are there. Now just sit with that for a little bit. And when you can sit with that and really grasp that that's where we truly are, that we're not here, then my next statement can potentially be accepted. And that next statement is, this experience is a projection. This is what was taught just recently, is a projection from there. This third dimensional experience is a projection from there. Imagine you were the man, go back to the old movie theaters, right? Where they had the film on the, the big square film on the strip and it was going around the reel. And there was somebody upstairs that turned that sucker on, huh? And when they put the light on it, it's shown on the screen. If you thought that you were the image on that screen, that's who you think you are now. You think you are real. You think you are the image on the screen, but in fact, you are the one up in the projector booth. Now, let's say you accept that. Okay, I can kind of work with that, sort of. What do you do with that? It's kind of random and, and a bit strange and hard to grasp at the very least. Let's say you accept it. What do you do with that? Here's what you do. You work with the laws that are currently known with our current physics and you work with your comprehension of I am a co-creator and you work with what has been shared that if all possibilities exist I can create anything and instead of leaving your projection booth walking downstairs walking onto the stage where you're seeing this film and you're all bought up in this film saying I can't change anything 
Right now, what you're doing is you're walking up to that screen and you're pulling out a paintbrush and you're like, I'm going to change this. And you're painting the screen. Why would you do that? That's just foolish. You're reacting and you're responding because you're doing it here in the third dimension. You get it? Go back upstairs, go back to your booth and change it there. How? You go inside and you create in here and you close your eyes and you bring the emotion of what it is you want into here. Which then, in here, which you still want to put in a box, my brain, my this, my that, in here is actually like, like an umbilical cord to source. We are one with source. But when you go in here, you are much, much closer to that source in terms of your realignment, in terms of your comprehension. So by going within and creating from within, using both our visuals and mostly 80% feelings, 20% visual, then you literally change the projection. And the only variable is that thing called time. That's the only variable. And if you realize that by changing it here and by re-emphasizing the feeling of the completed end result, <clears throat> then that projection will bring forth, man will manifest it. It will manifest on that screen because you didn't walk down to the screen and paint on the screen and wonder why it didn't change. You did it at the point closest to your origin, utilizing what we know of being co-creators and utilizing emotions as your gas pedal to speed up the fuel. You see, time is shortened when you apply more and more emotion. So visualize whatever it is you desire at that end result. Shorten time of its manifestation, which in essence is the projection onto your screen, by adding more and more emotion and repeating that emotion of it already being completed. That is what shortens the time frame. It is the emotion of fear, doubt, worry, concern that lengthens the time frame of that possibility occurring for you. Okay? So, in conclusion, you have two choices. You can be at the whim of everybody else's creation as if you are not in control of the screen that you're living in, the screen of life that you're reacting to, the screen of life that you're responding to. You can act as you're a victim of circumstances and you have no control. That is one choice. And that choice is not right. It's not wrong. There's, there's no good or bad about it. It is simply where you are currently at in your creation. And you are a lens of the source. So the source is experiencing that. The source is enjoying that. No different than the source is witnessing anything else that you might do. You're, you're just a lens for the source. So if that's where you would choose to be at, that is one choice. The other choice is to go inside, become the man standing, the man, the woman standing behind that projector and create from there using visualization and emotion to change what is coming out of the projector onto your life. Be responsible for what you are creating. Do not react and respond anymore. When something occurs that you do not enjoy, do not react, do not respond. Say, okay, I am the co-creator of my life. How I react and how I respond entirely affects my end result. Entirely. And before I've reacted and responded like this, and I have not enjoyed this end result. So now I'm going to choose something, even something that might seem impossible, and I'm going to give visual to it, and I'm going to give emotion to it, and I'm not going to let up on that positive emotion that comes with that completed result until... That becomes my manifestation. That is the other choice. Those are your two choices. And this, then, is up to this moment in time, my comprehension of our purpose here on Earth and who we are in relationship to the Creator. I shouldn't say our purpose because everybody's purpose is different, but who we are in relationship to the Creator and how, if you choose to, to accept or adopt anything that's been shared here, it could potentially bring great value to your life. Okay? So, 
I have no idea what I'm going to talk about next week. I've got a few things written down. I'm going off into the farther reaches of possibility here so that we can actually apply to life this spiritual consciousness and we can reach enlightenment a little bit faster. Uh, thank you for liking. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for letting other people know about this. This can possibly help a lot of people that might have not any idea who Master Shah is or any of the wisdom. And I've only shared maybe, I don't know, 15, 20% of some of the things that he's taught in this overall picture of how you can apply these wisdoms to your life. But I hope it helps you. So until next week, have an awesome day, everybody. Bye-bye.